Welcome back to Tightwad Workshop. Now it doesn't always feel like it, but the best time to have a flat tyre is before you leave your house, because that way you'll have access to all your tools and equipment. Unfortunately, most flat tyres happen when you're out in the middle of nowhere, so it's a good idea to always carry a toolkit with you. Here's what I carry in my travelling toolkit. A puncture repair kit, two tyre levers, a mini screwdriver, a small adjustable spanner, hex keys, and of course, a tyre pump. Back when I was a bicycle tourist, I'd carry a few extra tools and some spare parts, but this is plenty if you're not going far from home. So the first thing we need to do is remove the wheel that has the flat tyre. How you do this depends on the type of bike and whether it's the front or the back wheel, but I always start by turning the bike upside down. If your bike has V-brakes like this, squeeze the brake arms together and disconnect the cable. If you're removing the front wheel, you can now loosen the axle nuts. This bike has these safety lugs which go around the axle and lock into this slot. These help prevent the wheel from falling off if the axle nuts happen to loosen while you're riding the bike. Once the nuts and lugs are removed, your front wheel should lift straight off. Now we can move to the rear wheel. We'll start by disconnecting the brakes and removing the axle nuts as before, but this time we also need to extract the wheel from the chain. I find it easiest to stand behind the wheel, then use my left hand on the derailleur like this. Now if I tilt the derailleur arm forwards, then pull the whole assembly backwards, I can easily lift the wheel straight up off the chain. Our BMX bike works a little differently. It doesn't have an option to disconnect the brake cable of the caliper, so I'll loosen this adjuster as much as possible, then squeeze the caliper closed with one hand while I disconnect the cable from the lever. This caliper is also pretty badly bent, so I'll replace it in the bicycle brakes video before I let anyone ride this bike. The BMX has the same safety lugs on the front wheel as the mountain bike, so once again I'll remove the nuts and safety lugs, then lift the wheel off. This particular BMX bike has a coaster brake on its rear wheel, so we'll need to undo this screw as well as the axle nuts to remove the wheel. I'll just move the bracket out of the way, then put the screw back into it for safekeeping. Now we can remove those axle nuts from both sides. Once the axle nuts are removed, we can push the wheel forward in its slots, then remove the chain from the wheel sprocket. Now we can pull the wheel out to the rear. Once we have the wheels off both bikes, we can remove the tyres and tubes, then fix the punctures. I always start removing the tyre on the opposite side of the rim to the valve stem. On some bikes, the tyres are relatively loose on the wheel rims, and you can remove them without tools. Once you have the first side free, the other side can usually be popped off like this. If your tyre is too tight to remove with fingers alone, you'll need a pair of tyre levers to help. These come in a few different styles, and you can often find them included in deluxe bicycle tyre repair kits like these. Start by taking one of your tyre levers and slipping the spoon end between the tyre and the rim. Then turn the lever in this direction until you can clip its hook under one of the wheel spokes. Now you can use a second lever to work your way around the tyre, removing it from the rim. Once you get the tyre partly off the rim, you can slide the lever around the rest of the way, like this. Now we can push the valve stem out of the rim. Once we push the valve stem out of the rim, the other side of the tyre can usually be popped off the rim like this. Our next step is to find the punctures in the tubes. For our mountain bike, this is obvious, the valve stem has been pulled out of the tube. This kind of damage can't be repaired, so it will need a replacement tube. The mountain bike wheel is also missing its rim tape. This is tape that covers the tops of the spokes on the inside of the rim. The tape's usually made from a rubber strip, like this. But if you can't find a replacement, then a couple of layers of plastic insulation tape will work just as well. You'll also need to cut a hole through your new tape for the valve stem. Now we can look at the BMX tube. I can't see any obvious hole in the tube, so it's most likely a small one. The easiest way to find the hole is to pump some air into the tube, then listen for a leak. Once you find the hole, it's a good idea to put something like a matchstick through it to mark its location. Most of the time your tube will only have one puncture hole, but as you can see, this tube has a second one. If you can't find the hole just by listening, you can put the tube inside a container of water and check for air bubbles. This water bath method will also show you if any air is leaking from the valve. 
So now that we've located the holes in the tube, we can patch them. If you've used the water bath method, you'll need to let the tube dry in the sun first. You can buy two kinds of patches. One type uses glue and the other type is self-adhesive. I'll use a glue patch for the first hole. I'll start by tearing a patch off the sheet. The patch kit will usually contain either a piece of sandpaper or one of these tiny cheese grater tools. The tool is used to scrape the area around the hole like this. Doing this removes any dirt and grease from the tube's surface and also gives a better surface for the glue to stick to. Now I'll spread a small amount of rubber cement around the hole. Then we wait until it looks dry and feels tacky like this. Next, we can peel the foil backing off the patch and press it firmly over the hole. After waiting a few seconds, we can carefully peel the clear plastic film from the top surface of the patch. For the second hole, I'll use a self-adhesive patch. I'll use the cheese grater tool from the kit to roughen the tube surface, the same way as we did before. Then we can just peel the backing from the patch and press it into place. I haven't used these self-adhesive patches before, but I suspect they'll work just as well as the glued ones. If you found a leak from your valve stem, you can use a tool like this to remove it and clean it. The valve has a tiny spring inside it and a gate that only allows the air to flow into the tube, not out of it. Make sure all of its rubber seals are clean, then screw it firmly back into place. Now we can refit the tubes into the tyres. The new tube for the mountain bike wheel is folded up and packed completely flat, so I'll pump some air into it first to make it easier to fit. I like to start fitting the tube at the valve stem. Then I turn the tyre halfway around and fit the middle section of the tube next. Fitting the tube in sections this way helps to avoid having a loop of extra tube when you get back to your starting point. Now we can fit the tyre onto the rim. Start by inserting the valve stem into the rim. Now we can push the tyre into the rim on the valve stem side, then work our way around. Now we can pump it up a little bit and make sure the tyre is well centred on the rim. Most tyres will have a line moulded here on each side to help with this alignment. Once you're happy with the centering, inflate the tyres to full pressure. The recommended pressure should be printed on the side walls of the tyres. I'm using 50 psi, or 3.5 bar, for both of these tyres. Since we found a puncture in the BMX tube, we really should check the inside of the tyre to see what caused it. That looks like our perpetrator. It's some sort of tack, or maybe a short nail. I'll just use one of the tyre levers to remove it. Now we can insert the tube back into the tyre. I'll use the same technique as before, starting at the valve, then fitting the halfway point of the tube to the opposite side. Now we can fit the tyre onto the rim. Once again, we'll start by inserting the valve stem into the rim. Then I'll work my way around the rim, pushing the tyre in with my thumbs. I was able to get the first side of the tyre fitted using just my hands, but the second side was too tight, so I had to finish the last little bit using a tyre lever. You need to be careful doing this because it's very easy to pinch the tube against the rim and make new holes in it. Now I'll connect the pump, centre the tyre and inflate it to 50 psi, the same as we did before. Now we can put the wheels back onto the bikes. Slide the wheel all the way into the axle slots, refit the chain to the wheel sprocket, then pull the wheel back out again until the chain's tensioned. Now we can refit and tighten the axle nut on this side. Next, we need to reattach the brake arm to its bracket. The next step is to make sure that the rear wheel is centred in the bike frame. That looks OK, so we can fit the other axle nut and tighten it. Now we can drop the front wheel into place, fit the safety lugs, then fit and tighten the axle nuts. Now for the mountain bike wheels. For the rear wheel, hold the derailleur back with your left hand the same way as before. Now place the wheel sprocket on top of the chain and let it drop into the axle slots. Now fit and tighten the nut on the chain side of the wheel. As you can see, the wheel isn't properly centred in the frame, so I'll need to use one hand to pull the wheel straight while I tighten the other axle nut. It's a very good idea to reconnect your brakes as soon as you've refitted the wheel. Now we can refit the front wheel. The safety lugs go first, then the axle nuts. Then tighten both nuts firmly. Once again, reconnect those brakes right away. You don't want to remember this part halfway down a hill. 
So now I can finally start my ride. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Tightwad Workshop is filmed in front of a live studio audience.